Hello everyone, I hope you are keeping safe. Now, this is Mwale Mundalo, a physics and maths teacher. Now today, I want us to talk specifically uh, to students who are about or who are planning to do a Cambridge physics paper, that is IGCSE. Uh, there are a few tips that I want us to talk about uh, as you're preparing for that examination or even during what to do during the exams. So stay tuned, uh, get some coffee. We may have some a lot of discussion here. So let's start. Now, before you go to exam, you are preparing for physics exam. What is it that you need to do well in? Number one, be familiar with the command words. The command words here in every Cambridge question, there is always a command word. And what's the command word? They include such as state. Define, explain, um, describe. These are the terms that helps you understand what the question need. In every question, look at this one here. Set the name given to the point at which the weight of the road acts. You are supposed to give the specific answer. And all these you can able to find from the uh, you can able to find this. From the syllabus the terms are well defined look at this number one define is extended literally only a formal statement or equivalent paraphrase be required here look at this state it implies a conscious answer with little or no supporting argument so in every question you need to understand the terms that are being used uh, you need to be familiar with such terms now, another point that you should be able to understand is the formula. When you're revising, remember physics, the large percentage of questions come from calculations. In calculations, most of the physics questions are, it will require you to recall or remember formula. Unfortunately, in the Cambridge IGCSE, we will not be given the formula. So it is upon you to sit down right now and look at every topic. Can you be able to remember formula? You can always use a triangle method, such as this. Uh, in a case whereby you have F is equal to MA. How do you remember this kind of formula? You can always draw this triangle here, whereby we have here F, one side we have M, and one, one side we have, we have A. Uh, if you look at this, W is given by MG. There is a triangle, we can always remember this, this is W, then here we have M, this side we have G. Density is given by mass divided by volume. Uh, from the triangle, we can have this, so there is a mass here, density here, and volume here. So remember the formula. If you know the formula, or formulae in physics, then I'm telling you, you got 50% of the marks because some of these formula here we need them to help us explain even some points where calculations are not required be familiar uh, in using a calculator you can't borrow a calculator that you've never used as you're heading to the exam if necessary if you lose if you lost or you misplaced your calculator if you can't borrow anywhere, just buy the same calculator that you have been using. You don't want to walk to the exam. You are trying to understand the questions. You are also trying to understand how to use the calculator to understand the prefixes. The prefixes we are talking about here is this. These include the following. The prefixes we mostly use uh, include mainly kilo mega in IGCSE you can find kilowatts like in this question here where we are working out the time taken you can able to see clearly that uh, the power is given as 1.5 kilowatts most students will ignore that the kilo means a thousand you need to be able to remember that. You need to be able to know that mainly 
Mele means 10 power negative 3. Kilo means 10 power 3, which is a thousand. Mega means 10 power 6. These are the most common units that we use in, sorry, these are the most common prefixes that we use in IGCC physics Cambridge. Know the prefixes. But don't ignore the prefixes. When you ignore the prefixes, you know that you don't you want to get the right answer. Very, very important. The next one. This is applicable during the examination. In the examination, when you're given a paper like this, this is the paper that you've been given. The invigilators will walk around and give you the paper. And you'll be given instructions to follow. The paper will be there with you. You can go through the instruction that is there, depending on the instruction that you've been given, but you'll be given instruction. Now, read the instruction that is on the first page carefully. I know you've done a lot of papers. Kindly don't assume. Maybe there's something new. So kindly, just go through the instruction on the page. You can take one minute or less just to go through and make yourself familiar with the paper that you're going to do. Smile a little bit to give you some confidence when you see a question probably that is, looks familiar or that you've ever done before. The one that looks uh, difficult, don't worry, just say that you will come back. After scanning through the paper, just going through, just admiring the images drawn that drawn there, now you can able to open and start with question number one. Should you find that question one is a little bit tricky? You've read the first time, You've read the second time, but the question is still tricky. My advice to use this, don't spend a lot of time in a question that you don't understand. Skip the questions, but put a star in that question. Then go to the next question. Always remember to write the correct symbol and unit. This is something that you can able to do even right now. So as you're going to the exam, ensure that you know the symbols that are required in physics most students for example uh, they make mistakes in um, unit of charge unit of charge symbol of current you know if, if, if you look at this current this electric current the symbol of electric current is i while the unit of while well, its unit is arms. Most students make a mistake uh, by writing current as C, so that C is given by V, you know, sorry, we know that current I is given by V over, over R. This is from Ohm's law. Now, some students will forget and then write C. C is V over R. In physics, we need to use the right or the correct symbols that have been agreed upon or have been provided and this is well illustrated in the Cambridge syllabus uh, which you can always get access to. I will share the link of uh, this syllabus uh, just in the down there below. Now we have quantities, usual symbol and their usual unit. They are well illustrated and if you look at for example uh, unit of length. We have different units of length, millimeters, centimeter, meters, and kilometers. So what are we expected here? You need to be able to convert these units into uh, their respective SI unit. For, for instance, you need to be able to convert millimeters into, into meters, you need to be able to convert centimeters into meters, uh, kilometers into meters you need to be able to understand how to convert the units not just for length even volume area and uh, even time you need to be able to convert the units that is something you need to do if you've forgotten kindly pause this video and go back to your work converting units now sometimes 
the units can actually help you to remember the formula. Look at this example here once again. We have been given C, which is the specific capacity, as 720 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. From this unit here, you can actually know that, oh, so if this can, can give us what? Because C is given by joules over uh, kilogram times change in temperature or times a degree Celsius. So from this unit here, we can derive the formula that is used to calculate specific heat capacity. So both of them is very, very important. Now, if you look at uh, this question, writing the formula is number one thing. You don't need to remember the formula. I mean, you don't need to remember all the units of uh, of the quantities we are working out. For instance, density is given by mass divided by volume. Mass is given in kilogram. Volume is given by in cubic meters. You can see clearly that the unit of density will be kilogram over cubic meters. But you don't write it that way. We write as kilogram per cubic meters. So you don't need to cram the units of density from the formula, from your workout. Write the value with its unit so that you can able to derive the unit out of there. But of course there are units which we need to remember like the unit of, uh, of force which is always neutrons. Do not waste time and write a long answer to a question. Do not waste time and write a long answer to a given question which has one or two marks. When the question is one or two marks, go direct to the answer. As you can able to see what I'm doing here. In IGCSE physics, you are required to give your final answer in either two or three significant figures. Most of the time, you will give your answer in two significant figures, unless stated otherwise. But then, because I've mentioned this, some students, they truncate or round off their calculations prematurely. If you go back to this example where we are supposed to calculate the time taken, you can able to see the value of the energy that is gained by the air. We cannot round off the value of the energy until we get our final answer. So when we get our answer of T, that is when we can now round it off uh, to the value that you're seeing, that is 220 seconds. But we cannot round off prematurely during inside the calculations. Let the marks guide you in answering a question. Let the amount of marks guide you while answering a question. For instance, look at this question here. Now, uh, let's consider in part B. The figure 3.1 shows a horizontal road of length 2.4 meters and weight 160 newtons. The weight of the road acts at its center. The road is suspended by two vertical ropes, X and Y. The tension in the rope is 80 newtons. You can go to see the diagram. Now, Roman 1, okay, we can just answer this one here. Let's just answer Roman 1. So, Roman 1, Roman 1, state the name, look at this, this is the command word here, state the name given to the point at which the weight of the road acts. And this is center of mass, or you can call it center of gravity. So, this is center of gravity. Just state. Some students will start saying that, oh, the point at which the weight of the road acts is center of gravity. That is a waste of time. We have been told to state. Don't repeat any point on the question. It will add you no mark. Calculate the mass of the road. So from here we know that mass is given by W divided by G. Now give your answer direct. That is 160 divided by 10, which is just 16. Uh, 
16 kilogram sorry sorry day 16 kilogram now my main question is yes here is this the road is in equilibrium using data from the figure explain why now what we know is that when a body is in equilibrium there are always two conditions for that for that body to satisfy number one is that the resultant force acting on that body must be zero the resultant moment acting on that body must also be zero but those will just award you two marks the question is this how do we score four marks we have been told here there's an instruction here we have been told to use the data from the figure so if i say that there is no resultant no resultant force acting on the on the body if i say there's no resultant force acting on the body so which data can i use from this diagram you can able to see these upward forces here which is 80 newton and another 80 newton so upward forces should be equal to downward downward forces so for this case here the data that i'm going to use here is that 80 newtons plus 80 newtons should be equal to uh, 60 newtons and you can able to see this because 80 newton and 8 newton these are upward forces downward forces is 160 this shows that indeed there is no resultant force or the resultant force is zero another point is from the moment that the resultant moment should be zero so there should be no resultant moment there should be no resultant moment and how do we confirm this taking moment about the center of this road taking moment about the center of this road clockwise moment clockwise moment will be equal to 80 newtons 80 newtons times 1.2 8 newtons times 1.2 meters. Anticlockwise moment. Anticlockwise moment will also be equal to 80 newtons times 1.2, 1.2 meters. You can see clearly that clockwise moment is equal to anticlockwise moment. And we have used our data to score four marks. So look at the question. Ask yourself, how are you going to get four marks? If I just come here and state that the answer is no resultant force, no resultant moment, those are two marks. So we need to be able to understand the question and look at the marks also to guide us in answering the, the questions. So boys and girls out there, ladies and gentlemen, I want to wish you the very best as you're preparing for your next physics Cambridge exams, paper three and paper four. Take care of yourself and kindly, if you're new here, subscribe. We have a lot to do. If you're done with the exams, kindly share.